good afternoon, and welcome to St. Matthew's Church. We are glad you are here with us today as we encounter the risen Christ in the scriptures and the Eucharist today. We extend a special welcome to all of our young people who, who, who will be receiving Jesus and the Holy Eucharist today for the first time and to your families as well. If this is your first time with us here at St. Matthew's, or if you are returning after a time away, we extend our particular welcome to you. All the readings and songs can be found in the worship aids found near the entrances. In today's gospel reading, we hear of when Jesus appeared to his disciples after his resurrection, but Thomas was not with them. He wanted to be sure it was really Jesus, and so he came to believe when he saw Jesus right in front of him. Has there been a time in our own lives when we struggle to believe and God made himself clear to us? And now let us stand, and if you're comfortable singing, we invite you to join in our gathering song, Alleluia, Alleluia, let the holy anthem rise. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, <clears throat> grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each of you. As we gather this day to celebrate these sacred mysteries, to come to praise and worship God for his goodness to us, we also celebrate the fact that these young people are receiving the body and blood of the Lord for the very first time, that it will be an occasion of grace for them and for their families, and we ask the Lord once again for his pardon and forgiveness confess to Almighty God and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very reoccurrence of the Paschal Feast, kindle the faith of the people of you have made your own. Increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp rightly and understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them bring the proceeds of the sale and put them at the feet of the apostles. And they were distributed to each according to need. The word of the Lord.
beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God, and everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome, for whoever is begotten by God conquers the world. And the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my fingers into the nail marks and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now, a week later, his disciples were again inside and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it in my, into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, You have come to believe. Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. So at this time, maybe we can have the First Communion children just come up here and stand, please. First Communion kids, stand in a row.
you know, parents and grandparents. I don't know about you, but I think this looks like a pretty handsome group. So we congratulate them on their first communion day. Okay, so why don't you just come down here and sit on this um, part of the floor here and just turn and face in, okay? Just be seated. No, turn and face that way. Yeah. Why don't you guys move down here so that you can come and see. Just move down here and sit down here. No. Stand up. And you guys all move down here. There you go. I can roll. Yeah, that's what I should have said. So who's excited about tonight? Okay, you should be. This is a very, very important time. And uh, uh, so who is it you're going to be receiving for the first time here tonight? You're going to be receiving Jesus for the very first time. And so, so far, you have received two sacraments. Okay? You've received two. Which ones have you received? One of them? Baptism and reconciliation. So tonight you're about ready to receive the third sacrament of the sacrament of the, of the Holy Eucharist. So how many people like to receive gifts? Everybody does, don't you? Okay. So what are some times of the year or times in life that you receive gifts? Birthday. Birthday? Oh, come on. Time? Okay, when you're born, yeah, I didn't think about that one. Christmas, okay. So when people, when you, let's think about this. When you receive a gift from like your grandparents or your mom and dad or your aunts and uncles or you give them a gift, why do we give people gifts? Why do we give them a gift? Why don't you pull your mask down so I can hear what you're saying? To be nice, but why would you give them a gift? What is what is it in your heart? They love you, and we love them. Okay, so tonight, you know, boys and girls, you're going to be receiving a very, very important gift, and it's the gift of the body and blood of Jesus. Okay, so I got a couple of things here. Who is this? Okay. All right, this is what he was when he was a baby on Christmas, okay? What's this? How much is it? How many people think a $100 bill is a lot of money? Okay, yeah, it is. All right, boys and girls. You know, we talked about receiving gifts. Everybody, please, up here. We talked about receiving gifts. Now, what would happen if I said, if I put it on the radio, that... Um, next weekend, everybody who comes to receive or who comes to St. Matthew's Church will receive a hundred dollar bill. What do you think would happen? Do you think a lot of people would come? Why would they do that? Why would they do that? It's a lot of money and they want the money, right? Right. Now let's say this. Let's say next weekend I put on the radio. Everybody who comes to St. Matthew's Church is going to receive Jesus. I think people would be as excited about receiving Jesus as they would a $100 bill. Probably wouldn't be, would they? That's kind of sad. Yeah, some would. But what's true? Yeah, that's true. And, and that's, you know, the sad part about it is that some people think that this $100 bill is more important than Jesus. All right, boys and girls, what would happen we don't believe that, do we? We think Jesus is more important. That's why we're here tonight, right? Okay. So, boys and girls, what would happen if you never ate another sandwich or ate another glass or drank another glass of milk uh, from this day on? You never had anything more to eat or drink. What would happen to your body? What happened to your body? What 
happened to your body? Your Macedon? You'd feel weak, but then after you'd feel weak, then what would happen to your body? You would die, exactly. So we need food to live and, and, to, uh, uh, and we need water to drink, don't we? Boys and girls, put your hand on your heart. All right. You feel that heart beat? It's only beating because of Jesus. Jesus living deep within us. All right. And so when you were baptized, a priest or a deacon would have poured water over your head and he would have said, I baptize you in the name of the and Holy Spirit. At that moment, Jesus came into your life in the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's what gives us life. And where is it that we want to be at the very end of life? When you're 100 years old, where do we want to be? Everybody. We want to be in heaven. And who are we going to see when we, when we get to heaven? Everybody. Jesus. Jesus, God, Mary, Joseph, grandparents who have died, other people who have died. And that's going to be a wonderful, wonderful experience of all being together again. That's why Jesus gives us, it's broken now, but it's a host. And if you were in school the other day, we talked about this. It's made out of flour and water. And then when I put my hands over, I'm calling down the Holy Spirit, and it becomes what? The body and blood of Jesus. Okay. So, boys and girls, just as I said, if you never had another sandwich or another glass of milk from this day forward, your, your body would die. Jesus is giving you some wonderful, wonderful food in his own body and his blood. And this food is for us to keep the life of Jesus alive in our hearts. And you know, the sad part about it is that if we don't eat this bread, or eat this body and drink his blood, then sadly, just if you never ate another sandwich, your body would die. If we don't, if we don't partake of the Holy Eucharist on a, on, on a, on a regular basis, unfortunately, then, then the spirit of Jesus begins to die in our hearts. We don't want that to happen, do we? All right. So... What I'm going to ask you to do today is when you receive Jesus, when you, see, when you receive Jesus for the very first time and you go back to your spot, I want you to say, thank you, Jesus, for coming and giving me your body and your blood. Help me always to love you. And help me always to, and to love this wonderful gift that you have given. This gift that you're going to be receiving for the very first time. All right. Think you're ready? Yes. Are you excited? Yes. Okay. Why don't you guys go back to your spots? We need that. Just a minute for the parents. You know, today, um, and I'm not saying this just because I'm a priest, but I, I'm saying this because I believe it with all of my heart and my soul. So what we're doing here at Mass tonight is one of the most important things that we can do, and that's to worship God. And if I could, I would like to um, um, have you um, answer this question, because I think I know what the answer is. I'm not going to ask you to answer it. If I were to ask you, what is the most important thing that you want for your child? Hopefully, you would say, make sure that child gets to heaven, to see God, and to, to receive the wonderful things that he has waiting for us in the life of heaven. You know, as I said to the kids, unfortunately, if I did say that next weekend, everybody that came to church here would get a hundred dollar bill, probably the church would be full. But we have something that is far more wonderful and far more um, great than this hundred dollar bill. And that's giving, and that's, the, and that's Jesus. Jesus who is the way, the truth, and the life. And so I just would encourage you as parents, think about whole idea of doing everything you can as parents, as the first teachers of your children in the ways of the faith. Do everything you can help those kids to know and to love Jesus so that they do get to heaven. And I think that that's a, an important responsibility. But please, parents, if, if it's not a part of your regular routine, now is the time to make it so. Make sure that these kids don't just make First Communion and then nothing until several months later. Please, active participants, active participants in the parish and in the life of the church to make sure that we all receive its wonderful gift of the body and blood of the Lord. Let's stand then to present our, our professor of faith. I believe in one God, Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
of all things visible and invisible. They believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation, came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, Lord, the giver of life, proceeds in the Father and Son, with the Father and Son is adored and glorified. We have spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism, forgiveness of sins. We look forward to the resurrection of the dead, life of the world to come. Amen. As we stand before the Lord's presence here this day, we offer to him now these prayers of petition. For the church, for Pope Francis and all leaders ordained and lay, for renewed zeal to preach the risen Lord to all nations, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, for humility to put their people's needs first, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the newly baptized and received into the church, that they may find both warm welcome and holy challenge in the church, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to all illness and disease, especially the coronavirus, and soon, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For our envisioning team, for hearts open to the Holy Spirit as they discern where God is leading us as a parish community, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For our own faith community, may we live as the early church did, sharing all for the sake of the poor and the building up of the kingdom of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially Wayne Mills, and for the intention of this Mass, Faustina Weeby, may they see the face of God in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. We also pray for God's grace to come upon our first communicants and their families, that they will always come to cherish the Lord's presence in the Holy Eucharist. We ask this all through Christ our Lord. sacrifice in yours might be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in your names. For our good and the of all this holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people, that renewed by confession by your name and by baptism, they may attain they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. with you and with your spirit lift up your hearts we lift them up to the Lord let us give thanks to the Lord our God it is right and just 
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously. When Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed, through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people, exalt in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it. But this is the chalice of my blood, blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. For, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of his death resurrection. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. We pray that by partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed St. Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and praise and glorify you, your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 
Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not our temptation, deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray for every evil, graciously grant peace in our days. And by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. For Jesus Christ, you said you are apostles. Peace I leave you, and my peace I give you. Look not at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. sins of the world, stir those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. You say the word, and my soul shall be. Parents and the children who are receiving their first communion will come up first, then they will return to their pews, and then everyone else will come up after that, through the side aisles, after that. Children and parents through the center, everyone else through the sides.
Good evening, and thank you for worshiping us, worshiping with us tonight. Um, second graders, congratulations on making your first communion. This is such an exciting time. Um, after mass, you are welcome to take individual pictures, uh, whether you want to take them just with your first communicant or with Father. He will be available. 
We just ask that you do this as um, quickly as possible because we do have a 5.30 p.m. baptism and then a 6 p.m. mass for um, our parishioners. So you are more than welcome to take individual pictures. We just ask that um, we not take our time with those uh, because we have other uh, sacraments to attend to. Thank you so much. Before I finish Mass tonight, there's one uh, person here tonight that I, uh, Michelle Flint, where are you? I saw you in Mass. Can everybody take a look in the back to see Michelle? All right, Michelle is, uh, uh, if you, when you look at your packet, you got a rosary. Uh, Michelle handmade those rosaries. And so they're an act of love uh, on, her, on her behalf. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continual effect in our minds and hearts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This Mass is ended, go in peace, Alleluia, Alleluia.